check yours and make sure it went live with mine. It should. They're both green check marks. You're good. We got a Pokemon, folks. This is absolutely amazing. I love it. You're going to love every minute of this one. First of all, let me get the right thing up front. That's the right thing. We're going to do that. Who we got in chat? Sandra Piper, Scotty Waddles, Mitchell. Uh, there was another one. Still Crazy Chris. Everyone's showing up. That is awesome. We've got everybody going now. Let's do the intro since I've got a weird hesitation going on in my uh, stream yards. That just started. What are the humans doing? Do you think you're ready? Can you handle the truth? Or are you in denial and demand a more proof? They demonstrate in real time how they're spinning you lies. But no one pays attention, no one opens their eyes. They walk around like zombies with their head in the mobiles, signaling their virtues with a pick on their profile. Yeah. Signaling their virtues with a pick on their profile. So if you think you're ready, you don't need more proof. Conspiracy deniers are denying the truth. They fabricate our problems and pretend to provide the best solution, but we all know they lied. They lied about the weapons and they lied about health. They lied about the fact that they're transferring the wealth. You should really notice how they're pushing the fear. Keep everybody terrified and not thinking clear. Everybody terrified, not thinking clear. When you do, you realize that this is a trick. It's getting really stupid now, they're taking the mech. Said, do you think you're ready? Can you handle the truth? Or are you in denial and demanding more proof? They demonstrate in real time how they're spelling you lies. But no one pays attention, no one opens their eyes. They walk around like zombies with their head in the mobiles, signaling their virtues with a pick on their profile. Yeah. Signaling their virtues with a pick on their profile. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Sasquatch Shields for Sasquatch Shields, so you don't have to. So, we are here this evening with Mogzilla himself, the Mogulon monster. This man's almost as furry as I am, but I think I'm taller. So, we're going to go ahead and drop him right on into the fray. You know, you're a Pokemon, right? Remember me saying that? Yeah, you mentioned it, but I'm not sure what you meant about it. All right, right. So I'm going to go ahead and explain that to you. All right. Before I started my channel, there were maybe a dozen, two dozen creators that I decided I wanted to try to talk to with this whole live streaming thing that we got going on. The show grew sort of organically out of the fact that I asked too many questions to be sensible. And it just sort of happened. And it became this thing where those people that I wanted to go talk to. I decided I wanted to try to get them on the show and have that conversation with everybody involved so that people understand why I have the show that I have. Right on. And there's all kinds of shows. There's people who stare in a camera and vlog. There's people who do uh, panels. There's all kinds of different YouTube things. And I've gone into the depths of YouTube looking for some of the oldest content you can find just to put in, put on the screen because people forgot all about it. 
But in this particular episode, you are my Pokemon. Thank you for coming on the show, brother. My pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Unfortunately, you caught me at a bad time where I, I'm kind of at a chest cold. You sound like I, James Earl Jones had like angry, rough sex with a uh, accent. <laughs> it's pretty good. I like it. Although it probably doesn't feel great. We have a mountain of people in a uh, chat. Hold up. I, need to hide I see that. Right and, hold on. I need to fix something right quick. I just realized oh. that I didn't do the other thing. And plus, I'm, I'm also streaming, I guess, on my, my channel as well. Um, yeah, you are. You are. It should look exactly the same on both channels. And yeah, I didn't, have, we didn't plan it that way originally. I didn't. I didn't know I was doing that, but I went with it. So it's a. It's it's part of the deal. You can or you can end it anytime you want. You see the little button up there in the corner. If if it, if at any point in time it goes squirrely, feel free to bail. You watch my show, right? <laughs> yeah, I know it's not going to go. Oh, you go farther afield than three. You're good. And blue unicorn is mountain fresh. Let me run through chat right quick. Let's go. Let's do this before they get out of control because we got like 30 people in here now and it's fixing to get wacky. All right. So we got Scotty Waddles. We got Still Crazy Chris. Michelle, welcome to the show. Uh, Sandra Piper, Claiborne County Transparency, Van Buren Variety. Oh, that sounds cool. I got to check his channel out. Gary Spikes Jr. No, Senior. Gary Spikes Sr. Hofcast. We have. Gary. The Liliqui Penguin, which is one of the greatest freaking names I've ever read. Can Squatch, that's a previous guest. We've got Ajot, American Justice of Texas. That's Ajot's Corner for anybody who's keeping track. The real Polly T and Danny State. By the way, if you don't, if you get a few minutes and you're bored, go out, go check out the stuff that he does on his channel. It's just it's entertaining. It, that is entertainment. He just he's an entertaining fella. Um, Freeside, welcome to the show, bud. Good to see you. He's a regular around here. Uh, Shit, Michael wants a refund. He says Paulie's here. Absolutely. <laughs> what is that? Val SWPA? Would that be uh, Southwest Pennsylvania? I guess. Okay. Welcome in. Johnny uh, Hash. Where's the whole Johnny? That's my question. KK Bootsy, welcome to the show, bud. Oh, it just did that thing where it bumps. If I miss anybody, just chat, and I'll, I'll catch up to you. Because uh, it just made me go all the way back down to the bottom. But Dina P., Michael Haywood, welcome to the show. Everybody, I appreciate y'all coming. In. Anyway, we're going to skip on to the next bit. So I got this bit. Previous guest does a monologue, and I let he has total creative control over what it is, and I just kind of clip in and use it if, uh, if it's neat. And this week, he decided to cover the bounty. You know, the uh, mutiny, mutiny on the bounty, yeah. that whole thing. So it's a three minute bit where he kind of explains how he feels about the whole situation. So we're going to roll with it. 234 years ago today, Tuesday, 28 April 1789, was a rather quiet day in much of the world. In the United States, General George Washington arrived in New York City for his squaring in as the first president. In France, they were one week away from convening the Estates General. And though they had no way of knowing it at the time, that wound up being the date that future historians assigned as the official start of the French Revolution. Meanwhile, somewhere east of Tahiti in the Indian Ocean aboard a 220-ton, 90-foot-long converted merchant collier called His Majesty's Armed Vessel Bounty, Lieutenant William Bly of the Royal Navy was having a decidedly non-quiet day. Here, let's let him tell it in his own words. Quote, on the 28th of April at daylight in the morning, Christian having the morning watch, he with several others came into my cabin while I was asleep and seizing me, holding naked bayonets at my breast, tied my hands behind my back and threatened instant destruction if I uttered a word. I, however, called loudly for assistance, but the conspiracy was so well laid that the officers' cabin doors were guarded by sentinels. So Nelson, Peckover, Samuels, or the master could not come to me. I was now dragged on deck in my shirt and closely guarded. I demanded of Christian the case of such a violent act and severely degraded for his villainy. But he could only answer, not a word, sir, or you're dead. I dared him to the act and endeavored to rally some to a sense of their duty, but to no effect. Now, Christian, of course refers to Fletcher Christian, erstwhile first officer and acting lieutenant, leader of the bounty mutineers, and just since recently, as it happens, the son-in-law of the king of Tahiti. Hundreds of years and 
thousands of gallons of ink have been spilled by historians and sociologists in trying to explain the proximate causes of that event on that ship on that day. It is, after all, beyond any argument whatever, that Fletcher Christian and his confederates are the authors of the most famous mutiny in the history of human seafaring. For a long time, the narrative that prevailed in the public consciousness, and which was aided in no small part by Hollywood artifice, was that this was a simple cut-and-dried morality tale of a group of fed-up crewmen revolting against a cruel, paranoid tyrant of a captain. And sure, it makes for a much more entertaining story when Captain Bly is some mustache-twirling movie villain who has men flogged for no reason just because he enjoys flogging so much. The problem with that view of things is that there's not a scrap of anything in the historical record to substantiate the idea that Bly was that sort of commander of commander. In fact, but when you look at the man's life's work and his service record, he wound up retiring as Vice Admiral of the Blue, by the way. You see a man who had, on the whole, a fairly enlightened view of the world for a late 18th century British naval officer. There's no evidence that he enjoyed having people flogged or that he imposed that type of punishment more excessively than his contemporaries did. If the man had been a cruel, sadistic psychopath who doled out physical punishment for sport, it seems very highly unlikely that he would have gone on to have a perfectly spotless career and matriculate all the way to Vice Admiral of the Blue, which is basically number five in seniority in the entire Royal Navy. Guys who are cruel, twisted psychopaths don't have military careers like that. And it also speaks to the quality of Bly's character that he was found innocent and blameless by the Admiralty Board at his court-martial when he got back to England. Because a captain gets court-martialed any time he loses his ship, irrespective of the circumstances. They handed him back his sword and he got on with his career, which hadn't been a particularly distinguished career up until that point. Not by a long shot, but man, after that mutiny... He had just about the best career that a man can have. It's probably a great object lesson in what can happen when a man earns himself a second chance in life and it really lights a big old fire under his ass. And he did earn that second chance. He, he earned it by his own merit. It's often said by maritime historians that Sir Ernest Shackleton's voyage in the James, the James Caird, a voyage we've talked about before on this program, was the greatest open boat journey of all time. That voyage was... 800 miles from Elephant Island to South Georgia with five men, ample provisions, and nautical charts. But William Bly did a voyage five times that long in a similar-sized boat, but with 18 men, hardly any provisions, and no charts. Bly navigated that thing all the way to East Timor by memory. Let me say that again. He navigated 4,000 miles in a lifeboat by memory. And didn't lose a single man in the effort, just as Shackleton didn't. And again, back to the previous point, you can't accomplish a feat like that unless you are a legitimately great leader of men. William Bly's life is overflowing with things like that. Things that cruel, vindictive psychopaths simply cannot achieve. But at the same time, it would be a mistake to pretend Bly didn't contribute to blundering himself into the mutiny because... Well, let's face it, he very much did. The point of the voyage was to get breadfruit plants, take them back to the Caribbean, where they could then be used as a staple food for the slaves on the sugar plantations. Bly wanted to accomplish his mission, but he also wanted personal glory. So he tried to sail west around the Horn of South America so that when he got back home, he could claim not only to have accomplished the mission he set out to do, but also to have circumnavigated the globe. Now, this was a mistake. He spends a full month trying to get around the tip of South America, but he gets turned back and winds up having to sail east, which was the original plan. Here we go again. Watch this. It's like magic. I turn this off and it starts working again. Absolutely and amazing. Anyway, but now he is arriving in Tahiti well behind schedule. And the time of the year when the breadfruit plant what is it fixing to do to me, y'all? Welcome to Sasquatch Shields, where the technical issues are part of the show. What have I got running that I need not to have running? What is it? Or is, or is it just the rain coming down that hard outside? It can't be. Oh, it knocked my... To Thursday night, I think it was. Knocked my internet out. Wow. 
And it rained hard here today, too. The next segment. We will try the next segment. What's up, everybody? It's good to see you in chat. The rest That's of this. Great, yeah, no, great name. Makes stupid people, people famous. Weird. That's absolutely weird. All right, so here's your owl. This is your most recent video. What's 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 going on here? Oh, this? This was a, a burrowing owl that landed on top of a, a, a copper, I guess it's copper, dragon. Um, this was in Cape Coral. Is the, Are they native to Florida? Is this a common site? Well, they yeah, they're native. Um, oh, yeah. I did not know. And they, that. yeah, they they burrow in all these different spots. You got them all over there. I think you have them out in Arizona too. You might, yeah, you do have them in Arizona. Too. Well, if you had an owl burrowing in Georgia, at least locally, they drown. <laughs> well, locally. actually, these they're they're this particular group. Uh, their nest flooded out. It did get flooded during a really bad storm. That's terrible. Um, but you know they they survived they all survived and eventually came back cool yeah that's so just, that, that, that owl out. they had a, like a at one point there were seven owls they had a batch of five chicks that lived so it was cool okay things seem to be functioning again we're going to pretend like none of that ever happened so tell me this you're sitting around one day and you go I'm going to start a YouTube channel. You see an owl and a dragon. And <laughs> hey, what's up? Oh, that was yeah. that was the first thing I ever posted. Yes, sir. That's actually supposed to trigger this. Because you, you know what we are around here, folks. We are YouTube paleontologists. <laughs> Where's it at? I found this stupid movie many, many months ago, right around the time I started my channel, called uh, Deary Off the Wall. And um, it's hilarious. It's a terrible film. It's great. It stars a bowl of mud. You know what Yes. I'm a paleontologist. Oh, it's okay. There's dynamite in this bag, too. Oh. I am a paleontologist. I'm a paleontologist. Paleontologists study really old stuff. Like crackers. Because bad movies are funny. I've been watching that thing every Saturday night for a year, and it tickles me every single time I watch it. <laughs> There's dynamite in this bag, too, because <laughs> I'm a paleontologist. All right. So this is your very first video. What have we got going on here? I was just hanging out in Sedona, Arizona, and decided to film what was around me. Um, I was up on... This is over at a place called Broken Arrow. Right. Um, it's a big four-wheeling uh, spot. A lot of pink Jeep tours go through there and stuff. But, yeah, we were just hanging out, and I had never posted anything on YouTube. And I was like, oh, let me let me throw this up there. And I forgot it was up there. <laughs> like, when I started my channel, I, I go to look at my videos, and there's that video at the end. I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot that was even there. <laughs> It's a beautiful place. That place is oh, it's gorgeous. stunning. I mean, that stuff like this, and I'm not even joking. I can't exaggerate the influence this type of stuff has had on me. Seeing videos of things like this are entirely the reason I'm buying a van. Absolutely. You are definitely a place to go. I, I or, not my, just, my, my dad used to live in Sedona. Then he lived in Cottonwood. Um, but I worked in Sedona for four years. Um, yeah, it's, it's a gorgeous place. It's, it's an amazing place. It's, it's stunning. I mean, yeah, I got to go see stuff like this. I can't sit here anymore. I can't permit it. No, so yeah, I spent, I spent maybe eight years. I, on that. I spent maybe eight years strung out on every drug known to man. And when I finally kicked it all, I decided I wanted to go to mu music festivals and car shows. Right. But then I started a YouTube channel and it's been a sort of uphill battle ever since trying to get motivated to actually do something and meeting the people that I've met. Some of some of the people have been unbelievably cool and there's been some real stinkers in there too, but you know, you, you weed them out as well as you can. That don't make no sense. Oh, okay. Tuesday um, I, got, I got a weird 
notification from a group that I'm not actually in. And I don't understand that. I don't get it. What's up, Papa C? Welcome to the show. Good to see you. Sharon? I can't even go through all of yours. There's like so many people over there. That's, and Ajot, there is a email for you if you want to come stream this too. You know I don't care. I just didn't hey, think. Hey, Jen, that. what's up? Charlie, Helly Underdog Films. Good to see you. Can't the squash. Unicorn is Mountain Fresh. I'm going to get him on one day. He's a, he's actually going to do it. All right. So how's how's your channel uh, generally operate? Do you, do you do? I know you do panels and whatnot. I mean, I've been watching for over a year. So the panels, are they ad hoc or do you have any kind of rhyme or reason to them at all? No rhyme or reason. Just nothing. No reason Just let them roll. That is absolutely it's glorious. A, it's completely organic. So I, I have no plans when I come on. I, I just come on and and offer up that that space and time for people to get shit off their chest or do whatever, you know, just hang out. That's why okay. I do this for the, everybody in chat is because I was in chat with those guys for the longest time. Absolutely. You know, and, and I, I finally got to the point. I'm like, why, why, why is everybody here? You know. In this genre, this you know, Bigfoot, paranormal, whatever. Um, I was like, why? <laughs> I want to hear their stories. I love stories, so that's why I started the channel originally. It was just anybody can come on and hey, you got a story to tell? Mm -hmm. Let's hear it. I love hearing some of the stories that come out of the different guests. It's it's absolutely amazing. Absolutely. Um, in some cases, you know it's harder to justify some of the things that are said, but you don't have to, it's not necessary for you to believe it, for them to believe their experience, you know? And that's the part that I love about it is hello, Ida. Welcome to the show. Hey, Pammy. Um, so Mogulon monster, this is a, um, Bigfoot type creature that was seen where in Arizona, right? Then yes, I'm going to correct your pronunciation. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, it's um, I I say Mogion. Okay. Some say Mogion, like M U G. But well, I I'm from Jordan. How should I do it? Mogi Mogion. Mogion is how I I've been pronouncing it. It just feels so wrong in my mouth. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the L's the double L is like a y. Yeah, yeah I get it. So. I'm just oh, yeah. um, the Mogollon Rim is a is the southernmost tip of the Colorado Plateau. The Colorado Plateau is just east of, uh, west of the Rockies, I think, and um covers like four states. And it's the southernmost rim. And and the the, the Mogollon, from what I understood, it was a uh a prehistoric Indian tribe. Right. And they occupied that area. That's what I heard. And it also goes into New Mexico too. It's on the border there. So, um, then I heard something else. I don't know. So, but that's where it is. It's this in uh, Central Arizona, right? And it's the monster himself was described as Bigfoot, or or the what? What's the other guy? The Ohio Grassman. They're all the they same kind of similar. Same critter. Well, they're all. I mean, the skunk ape. The, the boogers, the, the Ohio Good grass book. man. That's one of my oh, favorite phrases. Just another name, you know? That is one of my absolute favorite phrases. What's that? Wood booger. The boogers? Wood booger, yeah. They, they, I, the first time I heard an old man tell me that I need to be careful out there in them woods, that wood booger going to get you. And I was like, okay, first of all, I have a pistol, so that wood booger better watch out. But second of all, um, yeah, what's a wood burger? And and he described a Sasquatch basically, and that was probably one of the very earliest encounters that you know, like my brain had with the concept. Yeah. Just the idea that there was something big and fuzzy out there wasn't gonna get me. Yeah. So when I I started the channel, I I got I got sucked into Bigfoot through Sasquatch Chronicles, right. You know, I caught an, an ep, one episode, <laughs> and then two, and then all of them. 
Um, yeah, that's, how, that's how it happens. That is a good addiction. <laughs> <laughs> that's how the story goes in every yeah. case. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the first couple, I'm like, oh, what the hell is this? You know, I didn't give Bigfoot much thought. And so I started, I stuck with it. I started listening to some more and I even subscribed to the, to his channel. Um, <laughs> there you go. I'm no longer subscribed, but that's another story. Yeah. We, we um, that way, unless you want to. So I got, I got hooked that way through Bigfoot, you know, and I'm like, or to Bigfoot through that channel. So then I started watching other channels and then I found the live channel and I was like, live, what's this about? <laughs> So I, I tried to click on chat and you had to put a, you had to build a YouTube page or a channel, start a channel. And I'm like, uh, shit, I don't want to put my name out there. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, we're not doing that. I so, haven't even asked you your name. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm in, I'm in Arizona and I'm into Bigfoot. So Mogia Monster. And it stuck. Absolutely. You know, it was Absolutely. fun because nobody could pronounce it. Yeah, um, it's got to be tons of fun, man. I know you love that. That's always <laughs> a, it's a good conversation starter because they immediately say it wrong and you immediately get to speak. <laughs> well, it's a Mogulon monster. Well, it's Mogion. You, you don't even have to. It's, you don't have to excuse yourself. It's just a pronunciation thing. It's you. So you get to decide how it's pronounced. <laughs> NAC says, I've always called you Mogs with a hillbilly twang. <laughs> What's up, Moogs? How are you doing over there, Moogs? Hmm, that's pretty good. I like that. So when I decided to make the channel, I was like, well, I can't. I, I might as well just use the name. I didn't know that, you know, there was a mogionmonster.com out there. And, you know, and he was a guy from Arizona, Mitch Waite, who's uh, no longer with us. But I knew nothing about any of that stuff, you know. Um. First time I hopped on, I was on YouTube live, was on Bigfoot Odyssey. Right. Um, Carrie had just, uh, it was like the, I think it was around Hall uh, Halloween. And he did the eight days of Halloween. He started on a Sunday, I think. And he said, anybody want to hop on? And and I, for some reason, said, oh, I'll hop on. And yeah, and I did. And the it was rest cool. is history. Yeah. And yeah, it was cool. It was the first time I was ever on a show or anything. And, you know, I, I kind of was like, all right, I can do this. <laughs> you know, I've failed to do one thing and, and I always do it. I think this is the first time I've slipped up in a freaking coon's age. Let me fix that immediately. Usually, what I have here is your channel linked. in chat because there's no point in linking it in your chat right all yeah, of your people are already subscribed so they're already there the trick is getting other people to see your stuff and go there to do the thing well we've got about almost 300 live shows um which to me just blows me away you know 300 live when how'd that happen Every time I bring up like a 200, some 200, I'm like, how did that happen? <laughs> like I, I had to go back and look through. I had kind of gotten complacent on my uh, intro for about six months. I didn't change it. I just kept the same intro and I had to build a system by which to actually create the, uh, the effect that I, that I want, which is like this. Tell everybody what your channel is. <laughs> Uh, my name, my, yeah, my name is Russell. So what's up, guys? Uh, people call me Mogs. My uh, channel is Mogia Monster. The show is called Why the Fascination or WTF. Uh, people, that's the other thing is people see WTF and they think automatically think the other. And you explain yeah. what it stands for, and they're like, "Oh, clever." So yeah, and we're on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. And we talk about anything, you know, from Bigfoot to 
I can second that. I've been on the show myself. Yeah, anything. We'll cover absolutely. <laughs> anything. Anybody can come on and chat on the channel. Yeah, I think I spent an hour on American Chestnuts one night, and he never even arched an eyebrow. You, you were like, really? That's interesting. <laughs> that was phenomenal, man. In fact, I went on and did a full show on my own channel about it. <laughs> You're important. And uh, it's just telling me it's 8.30. <laughs> For some reason, the frigging thing notifies me on the half hour. Oh, that's brilliant. I wish I didn't yeah. have that. All right. So you, you started your channel. You did the whole oh, function properly. You did the whole thing. And here you are. What is it? Three years. How old is your channel? It's going on three. I think so. I was uh, subscribed to you in my previous incarnation as an internet troll of the vilest order. Uh, I actually found you before I decided to make my channel. Your channel is one of the reasons I decided to make my channel, and it slightly right. influenced my name choice. Cho my name choice. The name comes from this thing that I saw in the swamp. Is this big white Sasquatch dude? He was as Caucasian as I am, but hairier than me or you, and I'm a hairy fella. Now. I don't know how else to describe it other than a Caucasian Sasquatch. And so just because I was looking for a name that had not been used and wasn't in search parameters anywhere at all. And that's what I ended up coming up with. Did you think of any other names before you decided on Mogollon Monster? No, it was, that was it. That was the only option. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I, I, cause everybody in chat knew me as Mogollon Monster. You know, when I first, I just wanted to hop in a live chat. That's all my, that's so I just put that down. I didn't expect it to, you know, five years later, you know, cause, um, this was at the conference recently. And Steve, yeah, was, we were fixing to go off into that. That's for, uh, the last 10 minutes, <laughs> but, uh, we're good. This was the most recent, um, Florida Bigfoot conference. You yep. and Connor were both there. Uh, yep. you did not feed my man. He, he left hungry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I made the attempt. Hey, yeah, nah, man, you're good. Hey, boopy. How you doing? Truth be told. Good to see you, bud. Bootsy snark and sass dude, squatch dude. Yeah. Previous guest. Um, <laughs> you'll, you'll find a lot of that around. Most of my previous guests will be are modded in chat. And if you pop up in chat between now and when your uh, edited episode is uploaded, which could be a couple of weeks, I'm, a, I'm way behind on my editing. I hate editing. <laughs> I'm way behind on it. But uh, I'll mod you. And when we do the, um, the premiere, you'll be able to put any links that you want to put in chat or whatnot. Currently, I think your folks are over there playing with their links. So. That seems to be functional. Truth be told, and Ajot are both going absolutely batty over here, and I love it. And if Can Squatch wants to drop his link, he can too, because he's previous guest. Which actually, I pulled him out of your viewership. Oh, Cans? The first time I asked you to come on the show, I think I had started my channel. It was like three weeks old, maybe. And you were like, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see. It'll, you know, you're busy. You're doing stuff. No shade. Uh, people are busy. And he hit me up after the show and was like, I'll come be on your show. And I'm like, cool. And he's part of the intro and the whole nine yards. And pretty much everything you see on the show has been created by either previous guests or uh, in some way influenced by the Pokemon out there. Right Got to collect them all. And it really breaks my heart when you find out a Pokemon dies. It's upsetting. Like UK transparency is like just got out of the hospital. Somebody told me he was dead. And I was like, oh man, I hadn't even had a chance to get him on the show yet. God, because it takes a little while. People got to trust you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, that's why I, that's why I leave my link in chat so people can decide, you know, if they want to come on, they can come on. If they don't, you know, watch the show. <laughs> Connor you was great with, sending people my way he'd meet people and say dude if you want to promote your channel go check out moogs and and he'll pop on 
So I'd see people pop in backstage I never saw before, and I already knew that they were going to say, Connor sent me. <laughs> so Connor was right. awesome. Almost every case, dude. I can't tell you how many times I've had it. I'm here from Bigfoot and Nine. Connor sent me. I'm here from Big. I'm glad, bro. That's cool. He's a cool fella, too. Yeah. I'm going to go hunt him down when I get my van rolling. That's going to happen. It is inevitable. I'm going to go give him a hot dog and be like, Mog sent it to you. <laughs> He thought you might be hungry. What's up, Ryan? Good to see you, bud. All right. So, uh, are are you like traveling around doing conferences, or are you just doing the weekend tripping in the southeast type thing? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not traveling around right now. Um, just did the local conference. It was only 45 minutes away. Right. You know, I did it the first conference they had. So, um, I. I'd like to check out some other conferences, though, you know. That's, that's kind of on the list of things to do here because we, we've kind of gotten tired of sitting around at the house playing video games and staring at people on the TV. We've decided that maybe perhaps that's not living. Damn. So we're going to mothball this whole <laughs> freaking clap trap and go out there and see what is. And I'm going to use Bigfoot conferences, car shows, uh, music festivals, just some dude standing on the side of the road. Stop and interview him, see what he has to say about it. Because you never know, right? Yeah, there was a point I was going to do the man on the street bit, you know, like just bring. Oh, no, I'm talking about an artistic kind of thing where it's literally I'm driving down the interstate, get off on an exit to get gas, and somebody else is getting gas and be like, hi, how you doing? You've met Caucasian Sasquatch. How do you feel about it? (laughs) So tell me, everybody spends all of their time looking for Sasquatch. What happens when Sasquatch starts looking for you? How does that make you feel? Less people will go into the woods. You reckon? Probably. Or less people will come out of the woods. That could go both ways, actually. That (laughs) That should be one of those David Pilates bits. Hmm. That whole missing 911 thing is uh, kind of weird, but at the same time, I want you to think about the fact that I challenge you to find a place that's not in the desert and is not within two miles of a water source, two miles of a berry patch, and two miles of a dense forest. <laughs> Any of these qualified as a missing 411. So I might need a few more details. <laughs> You get what I'm saying. I'm just saying he goes kind of wide with his nets all. I'm, I'm not saying he's necessarily wrong on any particular point. These people are obviously missing, but I think you can blame things like uh, snake bites, broken ankles, um, cats. It well, doesn't. He, covers, he, he does really. cover some weird stuff. I mean, but like people disappearing and, and showing up again in, in areas that they already repeatedly searched. Yeah, you know, that's weird. That, those are the good ones. I think we can all agree on that one. Those are the good ones. If you could, if you could have any particular channel just out of the blue on your show to, you know, have a chit chat and a couple of talks with them, uh, who, what channel would it be? If you could just pluck somebody from where they're at, Joe Rogan. Absolutely, do I'm so down balls deep on that one. Yes, we could have a hell of a conversation. Fucking a, Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be cool. I so, didn't get it to him though recently. I never really watched his stuff. I didn't, you know. Go so back I and look at some of the old shows, dude. The older shows back when he was a little bit more, um, he was less well known and less constrained by the by the powers that be because nobody cared. He has some really interesting shows. Like he brought on, uh, okay, you know the whole issue with thorium, right? Thorium is one of the most plentiful uh, uh, rare earth elements on earth. You can literally get it from beach sand, seawater. You can get it from so many sources. We don't use it. Why don't we use it? Well, there's a few reasons why, but depending on who you talk to is a big conspiracy because free energy isn't desired. You know, 
he has this one engineer come on and completely break down not only the process by which thorium could be useful, but why we don't utilize it, right? It, and it's a, it's a really in-depth interview and it's really well done. And it's one of his really early ones. You know, it's, it's in some ways it's better than some of his more recent work because homie just went completely in on it. It was great. No, he's, uh, I, I was surprised how, and, and I, it sounds stupid, but, or, or <laughs> I, he can carry on a conversation, you know, like, and he's, yeah. he's pretty informed on what he's talking about. My man had a library card. He made it work for him. You can tell. Yeah. I mean, he may have a college degree. I have no idea. But before either. that college degree happened, he was one of those guys, even if he was a jock, he was still one of those guys who was reading, obviously. He's uh, he's intelligent, you know, and I'd, I'd love to have a conversation with him. All right, Papa C. I'll see you if you get back. You have a lovely evening. I appreciate you coming by. We ain't got but a few more minutes of this, and you ain't Bob missing Craig, anything. happy birthday to your granddaughter. Happy birthday. Where's Pickles? I, I miss Pickles. Where's Dill? I didn't see Pickles. It's Miss Dill. Is that who we call Pickles? Yep. Okay. That, that explains that. Because I kind of I kind of try to keep abreast of the folks that are in here. Also, Cal, baby, welcome to the show, bud. Good to see you. I'd be lurking in his chats all the time when I'm over here editing or working or whatever. He'll be like out cop watching or, or whatever it is he's doing, and I'll just pop in and just sit there and see what what's what, who's who, and you know, <laughs> modern day America, baby. I mean, <coughs> Damn, map did top the charts, so. <laughs> so what do you plan on? Take it easy, bro. Next year, so. Do you have plans, or are you just freeballing it? What's that? Uh, so your your future for your channel. What 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 are you gonna do with it? You've got a few shorts up now. You're playing with that a little bit. Well, yeah, I've been putting shorts up for a while. Um, they're all nature based. It's what I see, you know, if I'm out fishing or whatever, you know, I, I put shorts up. Um, I'm probably going to keep just doing what I'm doing. You know, uh, I might, I might start trying to put it out there more because my theory is I, I don't want to be huge. I'm not in it for that. I'm in it for the guys in chat and somewhere right. they can hang out and just chill and, you know, and if to get too big, then you got, you know, I mean, the more the merrier, but it's so intimate the way it is now, you know, Yeah, it kind of everybody is. knows everybody, you know, you have a, a truly phenomenal chat. The breakdown of people that are in there are obviously just derived directly from the esoterica of YouTube, the weirdest little corners. You've got dogmen channels. You've got vampire channels. You've got paranormal channels. You've got, uh, I, I ran into one. Uh, she runs a, uh, a knitting channel. But she watches she watches you on Tuesday nights. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. I wish I could. Right on. But, you know, I've I've trolled through a significant portion of your viewer base looking for for guests to put on the show, if at all possible. And uh, some people respond, some people don't. Some people, you know, it's, it's exactly the cross section of population you'd expect. Yeah, it's a, and and there's you know like Sharon with two R's. She's over in Wales, I think Wales. I might be wrong. Yeah, no, Can Squatch gets it. It's like Moggs is a bartender, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's. Yeah. it's it's such an odd, it's not an odd mix. Given the name of your channel, given how free you are with the topics at hand, it makes sense that you would collect a very, not random, but wide net of people. Sure. Well, and it's also a wide net of people that, that believe, you know, that's what ties it all together is their belief in, in mm. something a little different, you know, be it Bigfoot, paranormal or whatever, you know. And they, they, there's all walks of life, and and but they're all just fucking awesome. Excuse me. 
<laughs> they are fucking awesome. Look, the the nerve it takes to do a video, regardless of whether you're in it or not, to take a video and share it with the entire world. And not only that, to go a step further and do a live stream where you at any moment can completely screw your channel by saying just the wrong phrase that in six months may become a problem. It's not even a problem right now. In a year, some politician may say something and it becomes verboten to say that. And bam, you catch a strike. That's absurd. I'm not worried about that. I'm not too terribly worried about it. But one thing I am slightly worried about, I cannot monetize the show. It is impossible because it is directly derived from your content. So every bit a stitch and bit of programming that I've played up to this point has been your content or Captain Curmudgeons, right? I don't have permission to use your content, but I do have permission to use that bit of Captain Curmudgeons. That song from um, um, uh, Richie, that's uh, 007. Um, so that's kind of how the way I try to draw, do all of this is utilize little bits and pieces from everybody I come across. But yeah. you, it started out as one of the basis of the channel, the regularity, the scheduling, the complete freedom of topics, that kind of concept. And it's worked out real well. I've, I'm, hey, Scully, welcome to the show. I'm going to be the Wizard of Oz in his production of The Wizard of Oz. And he hasn't told me whether I'm going to be permitted to do the James Earl Jones Wizard. Mm -hmm. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. I mean, it just sounds great. It's absolutely phenomenal. Well, you know what you've done, dude? You've made a show. I know you, you, you've you got something you've got to go do right after this, don't you? Are you going to stick around for some After Dark? Um, I might stick around for a little bit. I'm, I'm a little... I, one thing I have to do is go have a cigarette. Like, I need it. Right. Like no, you... Hand, you but. You, you can do that anytime you get bouncy. Um, the After Dark bit goes like this. I drop the link in chat. Any previous guests that want to come up can. Any uh, any other, anybody, if there's room, anybody else can come up that I'm somehow familiar with to any extent. I'm not real, uh, real picky on that part. Um, topics are whatever comes up or if nobody comes up we i have three videos about the death of alexander the great and we're going to go into the details of it and i have a theory that alexander the great killed himself in an attempt to mummify his body to become a pharaoh of old that sounds nuts i know but he did something extremely sus right before he died and it's one of those things that's a tiny detail that nobody bothers thinking on, but it's there in all the histories, right? It is extremely sus, but we'll get into that into the, in the whole after dark bit. Is there anything you want to tell everybody before we, we close out this part of the show? Um, I just want to say thanks for showing up everybody. Um, you know where to find me Tuesdays and Thursdays, nine o'clock. Um, yeah, just peace and God bless, you know? absolutely magnificent dude i appreciate you coming in this has been an my absolute pleasure. blast i'm gonna um drop you backstage for a minute do my weird little talk out as if this is the end of the show but we're not going anywhere if you want go have a cigarette we'll be back in five minutes right on man much love brother i appreciate it all right, all right folks that's pretty much the end of the show tonight we got a a little bit of an after show planned over here where I'm going to explain to everybody how Alexander the Great was not murdered, even though he surrounded himself by people who wanted to kill him and then died. If you're interested in anything as vague and unobtrusive as that, uh, feel free to stick around for just a few more minutes. Which one should I do the uh, outro? I'm going to do an old outro. We're not doing the new one, the one I've been using. We're going to use the... This one. Sorry, sorry. Good news, though. We're going to have to move the party somewhere a little bit more private, but you're all invited. Lorenzo will give you the details. Yeah! Hey, she was a cutie in a sundress. I told her I just had to confess. I got a crush on you, darling.
Them long tan legs got me falling. What are the humans doing? <laughs> You can just let her out of here with warning and say, hey, go, you're on your way. Oh, you think I am? no idea why I stopped her. relax? Acting like this is the first time that we've caught these guys doing this. We've been here all day catching them doing it. There's a baby crying in the, in the, in the car, and this guy wants an ID. I'm wondering why you're filming or taking pictures. Are you able to tell us? And don't put me on camera. School? This is illegal. What? I'm not in a school. Don't take my picture. You just took my picture, right? No. You just took my picture. So what gives you the right to do this? What gives me the right? Uh -huh. The Constitution of the United States?